and inherently taken. I talk about all things witchy, craft related, law of attraction, manifesting, esoteric, and everything else in between. So today I want to talk about the art of potion making. So it's not so much that I'm about to show you how to actually make potions, more of that to come. Uh, but I kind of wanted to give a high level conversation, if you will, <laughs> about the art of potion making. I don't see, I mean, you see people showing you decoctions and, you know, uh, liquid spells, if you will. Um, but there's not a whole lot of logic or conversation behind it, at least not now. Um, I realized I actually purchased a book and I, I'm pretty sure I did a witchy review on potion making. And um, I think I might bring that book back out along with a couple other uh, books as well. And hey, let's make some recipes out of the books together type thing. So anyway, let's get into it. So I think making potions can be a fun, expressive way to manipulate energy. Um, you know, all day I'm, I'm your candle magic girl. I love me a good candle spell. However, not however, and I also enjoy getting into the ki kitchen and uh, making up some sort of concoction, you know, magical concoction. Um, more about what that is or what it could be. But yeah, it can be a very creative way for you to express yourself in your witchcraft using materials that you have on hand. At the end of the day, a glass of water can be a potion, a simple glass of water. Now you want to kick it up a notch, add a cucumber to it. And you speak some words over that, depending on is it your intention, uh, but use those natural properties of the water. A, gl a simple glass of water, let me just continue, is a potion, can be a potion. Um, so, what kicks up the magical aspect is being able to grow and harvest your own ingredients. I realize this is not something everyone can do. I've had the pleasure and uh, <laughs> the pleasure of the experience. It wasn't always pleasurable of having my own garden this spring. By the time the summer came, it burned everything to hell. But I did experience it. So and, you know, it's seasonal. So <laughs> moving on. But um, the basil kept giving, like the basil kept coming. So that's a great thing. I still have a little bit of basil out there today. Most of it's dried up and gone. There's a couple leaves left. Um, and I'm very proud of that. But because I've grown it myself um, and I started those plants myself um, and nurtured and cared for them um, as long as the Arizona heat would let me, I take Another, I know for certain the energy put into those herbs. I know the nurturing, the time spent just sort of, you know, keeping my eyes on them and paying attention. I realize, you know, that's all good energy and good intentions. You know, I don't have, I didn't have a focus per se. Uh, the basil, I was just thinking abundance all the time when I saw it because it was so abundant. So imagine using that basil in, a, in, in some sort of potion or spell in general, but definitely for, you know, what we're talking about in a potion. Just imagine how powerful um, I perceive that to be, which is it, it matters what I perceive because I'm the one creating this magic. I'm bringing together these items that have their own metaphysical properties, and we are joining that to activate and then make something happen. That's where my intention comes in, but I'm jumping ahead. Uh, if it's not an option, you know, if you're not in a position where you can grow something or even, you know, adopt, uh, you know, some sort of herb, it, maybe you didn't grow it from seed, but you, you know, picked it up and you're keeping it alive. <laughs> um, that's also, that counts. I say it counts anyway. <laughs> but, um, I would say if you're not in a position to do any of that and you're going to have to go and purchase these items, whatever the ingredients are, um, the best thing you could do is just take additional care um, wherever you're sourcing, whatever your ingredients are. If it's at the supermarket, I would go more organic if possible. Um, if anything, just stay with the natural ingredients. Uh, this is not the time to maybe cut corn. I mean, you can. Um, but I think the more natural ingredients that you use in your potions, um, the, 
the easier it is to work with the metaphysical properties because everything has a vibration. Even, you know, um, man-made artificial things. I would just caution with that because there's other components that we don't know. We may not know the entire chemical breakdown, let alone the metaphysical uh, breakdown of these additional chemicals. And if it counteracts or if it just renders the whole thing, you know, void, you know, every, whatever you're doing. that That's my only issue. When I mean artificial, for instance, if I'm saying um, we are making uh, chocolate, hot, uh, hot chocolate. So if I'm doing hot chocolate, I wouldn't get the powdered flavored chocolate, cocoa mix. Um, I wouldn't use that. Could you? Yes. If that's what you have and you need to go and you try and do what you're trying to do, by all means, go ahead. However, if you have some time and you have the resource and access, you know, even if you okay, so even if you're not in a position where you can melt down chocolate to turn, you know, let's say that's just not going to happen. Maybe invest in a better quality packet of, of cocoa mix, you know, something that says it's actually chocolate, it's not chocolate flavored. That exists. It's going to cost maybe a little bit more, but depending on what you're doing, again, you want to align yourself with natural ingredients and less on the artificial side uh, for a better potion, more effective, something you have more, you have more knowledge of what's in it so you can control it better. You can manipulate that energy better. That's really why it's not a thing because it's better for you. I mean, we can get into that as well about just anything we're consuming. Uh, however, I'm speaking from a magical point of view uh, as well. You know, we want to know what's in it. You want to understand what's in it so you can call to those um, metaphysical properties of those ingredients and you know how to work with them and, you know, um, any additional things you want to add in. So we're talking about the hot cocoa, you know, you want to add in the cinnamon and you, you know, cinnamon for the most part, I'd like to believe what we're buying at the store is cinnamon. So I'm going to trust that whether it's Walmart brand or some fancy organic brand, it's still cinnamon. I, I, I hope I'm right. And, you know, something doesn't come out later, like you've been thinking you're consuming cinnamon and it's not. I'd like to believe it's cinnamon. <laughs> so again, which cinnamon is, you know, the tree, a bark of a tree, right? Uh, so, uh, you know, the shavings. So those are natural ingredients. So you combine that and you understand what that means and what that represents and so forth. And, you know, with the cocoa and whatever your intention is, I'm just giving a broad example here. Um, now, for me, I make at mostly edible potions. Um, either water-based or alcohol-based. I've shared videos before. I have a, a book. Uh, it's called Witchcraft Cocktails. Love that book. Use it, refer to it very often for some drinks. Here's the thing. You can infuse those alcoholic beverages with magic. Now, I've talked about this before, and I'm just going to state it again. This idea that alcohol is spirits. I've heard this. I've heard this breakdown. Um, you know, you're, whether it's from a, a more Judeo-Christian point of view where they're thinking demons or, you know, or you're allowing things to take over your spirit because you're inebriated. Um, if you are inebriated, I'm not making my witchcraft cocktails infused with magic to get drunk on. I'm drinking for a purpose usually or to just unwind and I want the extra boost of magic as well. Uh, but it's never to the point. I usually wear, I almost always just have the one drink. It's rare that I go in for two unless there was a little something left in the shaker. I might go ahead and polish that off. Uh, but that's not every night. That's not even every other night. <laughs> um, however, that I'm doing that. And even if it was, I'm consuming one drink. Uh, gratefully, I know my limits. So I would just say if you are in the realm of dealing with more, you know, spirits, if you will, alcohol. Uh, to make your potions, uh, you know, know your limits. I mean, but I'd like to believe we're all adults and you should know your limits. Um, consuming more doesn't mean faster magic. It doesn't mean um, it's going to come true, whatever, you know, the intention is, or it's going to work because you consume more of any potion, alcohol or not. 
whether it's, I mean, anything, too much of anything is not good for us. Too much water, we're drowning from the inside, you know? So there's a, there's such thing as too much of any good thing can hurt us. But, you know, practice your consumption of alcoholic beverage responsibly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, that's, uh, that's what I do. So t- sometimes I make potions for anointing because not all potions are consumed. Um, I don't always make them that way. Sometimes it's for anointing purposes, uh, traction. Now with me in the past, I haven't really purchased or not purchased, made an attraction. Yes, I have. I mean, you know what? It wasn't called attraction. It was something else I did. I was like, did I make it? Yeah, it was, it was like a um, sensual thing. I forgot what I called it. It wasn't sexual. I think it was sensual something, sensual attraction. Anyway, I was, I was doing something. So anyway, so I made that. Uh, but love, not love oils, things like that, you know, um, for sure. Rough patches during relationships. That's a good time to pull out your attraction oil, your love oil, things like that. Maybe double up on both. <laughs> and you just, you know, pulse points, make sure it's something that, you know, gives the, you know, you don't want something that smells horrible, uh, to the person <laughs> intended. Um, but of course it's someone you're trying to get into a relationship with same deal. You know, here's the thing, store-bought perfumes by all means are not natural typically. However, you can definitely use those. Um, you can enchant those po- already made potions. If you're purchasing from, you know, someone, you know, someone's shop and you want their oil, love oil or luck oil or whatever, Um, just remember they've infused that, assuming they're legit, infused it with their magic, um, to have the intended results that they're claiming, uh, for the product. Uh, when you get things like that, I would just suggest doing, you know, just a little, you have to be careful with the cleansing because they've already spelled it. So you have to get a little crafty. That's a whole other topic um, about how to cleanse things. I, this is something I contend with myself if I purchase store-bought items like oils and things like that. Uh, but you do still need to do a cleanse with that sort of stuff. But, um, you know, you can still use it. You can mix the store-bought item with something you've concocted to add a little bit more of your energy as well to it. Uh, Maybe you want to put a drop uh, or two of a specific type of essential oil or maybe a dried herb or something into that, you know, potion um, to give it your flair. Or honestly, even if it's a piece of your hair or something that is of your essence, you see what I mean? Um, On some level, you can even say bodily fluids, but, you know, watch that. (laughs) Watch which kind. I'm not even going to get into that. But, you know, you can figure that out just a little bit to infuse, to make this chemical base, um, especially like perfumes and colognes and things of that nature. Um, You might, you know, you can add a little something, something, your own little je ne sais quoi, um, so that your intention is more focused, if we will. (laughs) In most cases, you probably already know how to concoct a potion. Um, You mix together your ingredients, right? Um, However, I kind of already touched on it, your intention, what you intend, um, how you're activating all of these things. That does definitely have a key role. A couple things to think about is like, what are you going to say? Are you going to speak words out loud? Are you going to speak a charm? To activate the ingredients, are you going to do some sort of action, something with your hands? You know, do you have some sort of hand motion? I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. Anyway, but are you doing some sort of hand motion or something like that? Are you going to sing? Are you going to dance? Are you going to beat drums? Are you going to, um, you know, shake? I don't know. What are you? What are you doing? Like, start thinking about that sort of stuff. And um, honestly, the phys- do or all of the above, you know, if you're doing a little bit of everything, you know, whatever it takes. Um, and how to, you know, also the other thing, of course, is trying to figure out which ingredients to use. My answer to that is to maybe use a framework of something you've already seen 
and then work from there. If it works, great. If you feel like it's not working, tap into your intuition. A lot of us already have a good amount of knowledge. We have a link usually to our ancestors, or we'll just say for those who are maybe not comfortable with that concept, those who came before us, those who um, who were of the same life, the a life of a witch, practitioner, whatever, you know, um, those folk. Um, yeah, maybe they can come to you if you allow it. You know, it might take some time, uh, but they can come to you. I know um, the, I don't, she, I mean, I believe her. She She's stayed true to the story, but the creator and owner of the business, The Honey Pot, I don't remember her name right now, but she said that she created the entire line, like the ingredients of what to use for these products uh, because her ancestors came to her in a dream. And they told her exactly what to do, what to use, and it worked. Um, she dealt with her own, you know, health issues and things like that, how she couldn't, you know, get rid of um, BV that she had. And if you're a woman, you know, you know, that's not something you want to keep around. Um, but yeah, she um, was having, that was the whole thing. So anyway, so she, you know, it came to her, her ancestors came to her, gave her that information. She used it at work. She grew it and here we are she's you know honey pot like it's hard to keep that stuff on the shelf apparently it sells out so quickly because the products seem to be so effective um the other things depending on a type of potion there's a practical matters of anything like how long is this going to keep especially when we're talking about oils and other things if it's like to be consumed edible potions in that moment then there's no question you're drinking it right then and there or you're drinking it within a day or two. It's usually fine. But once you get into things that needs to keep like things that you're putting on your skin, maybe even consuming, but more or less like, you know, oils and things like that, salts, whatever um, you just want to be or or food, you know, because those can be potions. A soup is a potion. You know, it's cook, cook it in your cauldron. <laughs> it's a, it's a um, potion. So. Uh, you know, basically do the homework to understand about natural preservatives, uh, things to keep that keep the, the potion a little bit longer. Uh, it's worth to take the time to figure out that. And then um, how long you should expect the magic to last. So that's something, again, well, if you're getting something out of a book, maybe they give that information, maybe they don't. But that's where you come in, the witch, the practitioner. You set the tone. Um, the thing about magic is sometimes we have this idea that there's the universe, there's spirit, there's all this other um, this other will at these other uh, will. I'm trying to skip the right word. Powers at play. Others will. They're all, you know whether it's a person, an entity of sorts. Uh, you know, the deities you're working with, all of that. So the thing about it is it starts with you, though, whether you choose to ignore, accept guidance from the, the spirit realm, spirit world, universe. Um, if you're being warned not to do something, if you continue, that's on you. If um, you have your, your intuition as well, if you're ignoring that, that, that that's, you know... <laughs> That's on you. And it doesn't always mean the worst thing. Sometimes it's just, it, it invites a, 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 a not so fun learning opportunity maybe for yourself. Uh, but I say all that to say, because how long it lasts is what you dictate. That's your intention. There's some thought behind this. Yes. Sometimes I get in my kitchen and I'm just whipping things up intuitively on the fly without a lot of introspection thought it just feels natural and I just go with it. And I think those are great experiences if when that arrives. If, if you have an opportunity, you just kind of flow it in the kitchen, you're making stuff, um, do it, you know, by all means. However, as you grow uh, more into witchcraft and as um, I know for me, oh, my hands are dry. As I know for me, I figured out that it's sometimes good to do the pre-work to do a little bit more studying and understanding about what I'm working with. Um, and then from there, once you understand the ingredients you're using, their metaphysical properties, then I can start to understand, well, what is the expectation of this lasting roses? 
for instance, if you're doing something with roses, I would think anything dealing with roses is temporary, like flowers in general, because it, you know, they, they die, they fade, they, you know, um, I mean, as with anything organic, you know, we understand that, but like, just thinking of like the long lasting, um, obviously if you're doing something, I mean, you wouldn't be using, well, I don't know, maybe you would be using fresh flowers, but I typically would revert to dried flowers. But if you were using fresh flowers, to me, that's even more temporary. Dried, I'm thinking, is a little bit more time than what would be considered uh, for the um, fresh flowers. So I'm thinking you get a little bit more time. Now, how much time exactly? Days versus weeks, you know? Uh, so maybe make another batch. Uh, that's going to be a trial and error type thing as well. Depend I mean, it really just depends. Uh, let's go back to the hot or attraction oil or something like that that you're making. You need to make sure, and I'll talk about that in a second, you have some sort of preservative or something like that, or you're just making small batches and you're going to just keep making them for yourself. Um, some For most people, usually with attraction, there it's maybe an event that they're going to, or eat, let's say someone you pass to by work or at work or whatever the deal is. So you would use this attraction oil with your intention. So once you have them and maybe in a talking phase, you're still using it. But after that, you might not need to use the attraction oil. Hopefully you feel comfortable letting that go. And, um, you know, <laughs> like chill with, like, you don't have to run it you don't have to keep using it. Um, so then it will work. So it's worked as intended. So how long that process took? Well, you would decide that. But if it was, I mean, don't forget, you can use traction oil during like a job interview. It doesn't have to always be romantic. Uh, you just want to, you know, people to find you attractive for whatever, you know, whatever intended purpose is. So, um, and something like that, I would need it to work then. If I had a second interview, then I'm going to use it again. And it worked for that day or maybe, you know, until you washed it off or something like that. Consumable product or, you know, potions. Um, I, I, I find they don't, they're not indefinite. You usually have to re-up. You're going to have to make more. Um, depending on what the intention is. For some people, it most times when I'm using a potion... The intention is not forever and ever. It's for the circumstance. Like I'm working on something. It's for that circumstance. So uh, that's what I say about that, about time-wise. And just some simple potion ideas that are just simple, so simple and deceptive because you don't even think about this. But lemonade, making some lemonade, lemon sugar water, <laughs> and whatever else you want to add to it. Um but lemons are associated with what? Purifying, cleansing. I mean, people use lemon to literally cl clean their home, you know. Um, so if you're looking for a fresh start, um, you want to start, you know, and then if you apply this from a seasonal perspective as well, that's a whole other thing. But yeah, if you want to, you know, make a fresh start, you, you want to start something new. Let's say, you know what, you would... Uh, make your potion, you would activate and uh, enchant, if you will, and then, you know, consume it with whatever the intention was to, you know, fresh start, we're letting go, you know, and you could take this a step further, even doing like uh, some sort of cleanse or something like that, that can be your potion as well, with the intention of physically cleansing. And also, um, you can add a spiritual co component to that as well to that potion. Another thing is, I call it liquid courage, but black coffee, it's not out, it can, you can add a little alcohol to it, but um, espresso, if you will, uh, just a small amount with just a, you know, add a little sugar to it if you need it, uh, and put a little uh, cinnamon on there as well, just a, just a pinch, just a little bit of cinnamon um, to that as well, and the caffeine alone carries you through, that's the purpose, <laughs> it will boost your energy to get through any uncomfortable task, uh, but your magic behind it also will use those ingredients 
to direct it to do even more than that. So, you know, you're not just going to be, you know, all hyped up for no reason. <laughs> um, you would have a, a, a direct reason to be that hyped up. Like it, it, it's, it'll bring more courage. It'll bring uh, confidence as well uh, for you to carry whatever the task is that you need to do. And then like, again, attracting love. Um, you know, a love oil with a base of maybe olive oil, uh, something simple, keeping it simple and like dried rose, um, apple peels dried, of course, um, and maybe a bit of a lavender. And, you know, you can use a preservative. I've been working on some stuff myself. So I found out like things like uh, copal and frankincense um, are great. The resins are great. You know, gives it a little bit preservation. Um and another thing, I, I kind of hinted at this before, but oil solves and ointments are potions. Again, soups and stews are potions as well. Sometimes potion people kind of got this idea of a little bottle where you just drink. I mean, it can be, but, you know, your thermos of soup is your potion as well. I admit, you know, we're getting to the kitchen, kitchen magic world as well, but those are potions. They are. Now, how they, you know, like a solve solidifies, but initially it wasn't that. Um, and it was a, you know, it's a potion. Potions are usually some sort of liquid base, right? So that was a potion. Um, so as I was saying, even if you're not a green witch or a kitchen witch or a cottage witch like myself, you can become adept at potion making. Um, and I believe most of us learn intuitively as children. Uh, playing in with, you know, water and dirt, making mud, putting twigs in it and rocks and all that and calling it potion making. I've done that myself. Um, or, you know, mixing up stuff that you probably <laughs> wasting stuff, powder, stuff like that in the house. I would do that kind of stuff. Um, making a potion, a magical potion. Um, but there is also science behind potion making. And I think for those who are a little, for lack of better words, less woo-woo, <laughs> I'm 100% woo-woo, uh, but a, a more practical thinking uh, witches or practitioners, um, I think that potion making is where it's at for them because uh, there's a science behind it. You understand the history, the, the, the records that have been kept through hundreds of years of history about certain herbs certain uh, mushrooms, if you're making soups, like I said, and stews or stocks and things like that, um, you understand that. You, you understand medicinally um, what it involves. You also understand, you know, whether something's best as a tincture, whether it's best as a salve, whether it's best um, as uh, some sort of concoction, deconcoction, like you can get behind the science of it. Uh, for practical thinking which is that makes a lot of sense like uh, oh okay so there's something to study to learn they could put it together um i caution my more practical i was very much like that myself practical minded which is that you gotta let some of that whimsy in it can't all be a checklist like a for real recipe and you just do everything by the letter by each instruction and then that's it like you have got to believe <laughs> you've got to go deeper than that. There's got to be a connection to you. You need to be connected to the process. Um, and I don't mean like obsessed with it, the process of potion making. I mean connected, meaning this feels, um, feelings, your emotions, like t let that tie in. Like, what are you thinking? What are you feeling when you're making this, this potion? Where's your mind at? Are you thinking about other things? Cause you got to be careful with that. Um, maybe, you know, keep music on something that kind of helps you if you're making something, you know, for the purpose of um, maybe calming and soothing, maybe it's just chamomile tea and you have fresh chamomile and you're making your, your um, blending it with something else and making a cup of tea. That's a potion. Um, you might want to, you know, have on something calming. Uh, maybe your mind is racing and it is hard to think right now. So that's, you know, that music or whatever it is that you need to calm down, just, you know, listening to soothing sounds, whatever that is. Uh, take that opportunity while you're preparing it, if possible. This doesn't have to take a long time. It's just long enough for you to kind of stop 
whatever's happening up here and listen to the outward stuff mm -hmm. just so you can get through the process and have your energy a little bit more aligned to the purpose of um, what you're concocting, what your potion is. Um, so there's the study and understanding of the alchemical process uh, or what we're now calling chemistry. Um, so that's the whole other portion of um, <laughs> of uh, potion making, which takes me back to remembering when I was a kid, I begged my mother for, and I was like, maybe 11, 10. I wanted a chemistry set. This was a thing. And I know they sell kits like this now, but mine was like, it came with a Bunsen burner. It was, it was everything. And I wanted that so very bad. And she finally, she got it for me. And I was so grateful. I was up there. Now, mind you, what are you like 10? So like maybe fifth grade. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't have a lot of understanding of chemistry and the components. And I think there was a booklet and it gave a little high level information or, but look, I was like, it was like experiments. I just wanted to run an experiment and I wanted to make something happen. I wanted to discover something or make a magical potion. That, that's where my brain was at at the time. And my intention was to make some sort of magical potion. Um, but that's okay. You know, also that I thought, when I was younger like that, that would make me love chemistry. It did not, by the way. But I do love milk potion making and I love witchcraft. Chemistry, not so much. Oh, my God. Chemistry, I feel like maybe chemistry is more exciting. But the way it was taught to me, just they just took the excitement out of it. I had to homeschool chemistry. And I had someone who was on a path to a medical profession. Initially, she, my daughter wanted to be a doctor. So when I homeschooled her, I was teaching, I basically got the free courses from um, MIT. Uh, I don't know if they still do that, but we did. And everything is laid out. And I even uh, purchased the books. I think it was online. I was able to get it um, for her to learn college, like first college level chemistry. As she was also learning first year college level biology. Um, for this this girl who was, uh, I felt like shortchanged on education through the school system I came up in. I was learning with her, but it was a great experience um, going back to school the way I did being a homeschooling parent. Um, but yeah, it made me know I definitely enjoy making potions. Um, potion making can be as simple as your morning smoothie, um, or it could be much more complex as referencing planetary placements, the season, um, using obscure ingredients uh, that are to be prepared at a specific date and time and to only be consumed by, you know, the intended. Uh, potion making can, can get real deep. It can get really, you know, you might handle the individual ingredients and have to source them at a certain time of year have to bless them. You know, maybe they're, uh, you know, you're using something associated with a specific goddess. So you have to, you want to petition the goddess first about this one ingredient of, let's say, six things that are going in, but you need, you want to make sure you pull in that additional power and you ask, you know, the goddess to bless it and to add uh, aid in, in whatever your intention is. And, you know, that's just the one ingredient. And then you gather the other things. So listen, being a true spiritualist, <laughs> um, it can get that way, especially, uh, you know, hoodoo and things of that nature. I want to say folk magic. Um, not everything is on the fly. Um, and I'm bringing that up for a reason, because I know I'm sort of that person. I will. There are times just my intuition takes over, which is a good thing always. Um, and, uh, I feel very aligned spirit, you know, where, what my emotional state, like everything's all aligned and we're making this happen. Um, the, you know, my ancestors are God in my hands telling me how much to put this and do that with. Um, and that's fine, but that's not all there is to how I practice. And hopefully that's not all there is to how you're practicing because, it, there's nothing wrong with having a little bit more forethought and scheduling, scary, <laughs> and um, thinking a little bit more about the specifics behind what you're working on. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, 
and noting these things per se in a grimoire or book of shadows, if you will. Uh, there's nothing wrong with doing those things. And I think along with on the fly or intuitive based only, you're kind of just moving with what you got and you're just making it and it makes sense. I, give some thought, occasionally make it a little bit more complex. Um, push yourself as a witch, you know, motiv motivate yourself to grow in your power. Uh, you can become more powerful. There are people, if you think about it, there are some people, um, and there, none of these are like celebrity people, so I'm not into that, but there are some people I've come across who I can sense their power, you know, especially more your, uh, elders, uh, for sure. I can sense their power. Um, you know, we would have called these women, especially within black community, you know, your praying grandmother. Um, she, you know, it just seems like whatever granny prayed for, you know, what's happening, good or bad. <laughs> um, it, it's happening. Um, you know, we can get into the whole thing of that, but uh, that's not so much, usually a lot, usually, I don't want to say usually because I don't want to speak for everybody's situation, a good amount of times. They wasn't just praying. They was doing some other stuff, too. They was whole witches, but we wouldn't have called them witches. Um, they was doing what needed to be done <laughs> uh, to survive, as a lot of us are doing now as well. Um, I love this witchcraft thing that I do. <laughs> I enjoy it so much. I enjoy talking about it. Um, I enjoy explaining uh you know, working on classes, working uh, as, uh, you know, your spiritual, um, I like to call it your spiritual cheer cheerleader. <laughs> um, but I enjoy doing all of that sort of stuff because I genuinely live this, this life. And um, when I am not doing the things that I know make me feel good, uh, like potion making and making witchcrafts and things of that nature and reading um, more things, even rereading things I already know about. When I'm not doing those things or even conversing with others who are of the same mind, um, I don't really feel like myself. I feel like stagnant. Like I can sense the energy shift. So I try not to go too long without doing anything. Um, even if it's down to, like I said, my morning cup of tea, you know, uh, I try to be a little bit more um, intentional preparing it as best as I can. Um, and if I can't get that intentional while making it, cause it's just time-wise, instead, while I'm consuming it, that first sip, I try to say something or think something or at least uh, get my hopes up. Because uh, it's, it's first thing in the morning, you know, it's usually the first thing I'm breaking my fast with that. So it does have significance, that cup of tea. And I try to come to it thinking about that as best as I can. I, I fall short some mornings too, because like sometimes I'm running late, I'm groggy or there's something else going on and I'm dealing with that. So I'm not as focused. Uh, so maybe I don't catch it then, but maybe the glass of water that I'm, I have multiple beverages on my desk when I work. So maybe the glass of water instead is the thing that I say some words over or put my intentions into or the food, or or it's the water coming out of the shower head at the end of the day <laughs> um, that, I'm, that I'm speaking words over, some sort of liquid. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I really enjoy doing this. And um, I just, I thought this was just a, a good topic, high level, the art of potion making um, to sort of just talk about. Um, and yeah, let me know in the comments, are you a potion maker? Do you make potions? Um, since we've kind of went over what potions are a little bit that I've talked about it. So, you know, it potion isn't always like, a, you know, something in a little bottle that you're drinking. You know, it's the stew that you make. You know, it's those pot of um, greens that we're going to make on New Year's, that pot liquor. <laughs> that can also be considered a potion. That pot liquor for some collard greens? Yes. Don't. Look now, that you you can work with that too, and that's getting in a little bit more of that folk magic that I'm talking about. Uh, don't be shy to broaden uh, your concepts and your ideas on what what is considered a potion, and you could take just think about it. You can take a shot of that. <laughs> um, you sure could, but I'll leave it here. 
thank you so much for watching. Um, please hit the like button uh, if you like. <laughs> Subscribe if you like. Uh, consider going to leavetaken.com as well uh, to check out some of my services. Stay tuned. I'm some really cool things coming. I got derailed, but it's coming. Um, and yeah, and thank you to Leave Taken members per huge. Um, I appreciate you all. All right, so I'm out of here. Thanks again. Go make some potions. Bye. <laughs>